There's another reason though to redeem the time, and it's vital as well. And that reason is that time can never be recovered. That's just the nature of time. We're going to use it or we're going to lose it. James in Scripture said, What is your life? It's just a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. I think about this in connection with Psalm 90, where the writer of that psalm says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts into wisdom. What does that really mean, though, to number our days? Well, I want you to think about it this way. There's going to come a point in most of our lives, uh, if we live long enough, where we will no longer think about our life in terms of how far we've come. Rather, we start thinking in, of life in terms of how far we probably have left to go. What I mean is, your reference point is going to change from the beginning of life to the end of life. We no longer look back and say, how many birthdays have I had? We start looking the other direction and say, how many more birthdays will I likely have? We don't see time now as something we accumulate, something we're getting more of. We see it as something we're using up, something We've got less of with each passing day. This one is God's perspective because he said, teach us to what? Number. That is, put a number on our remaining days. The problem, though, is that the research tells us that most people will not clearly make that switch in their thinking until they are already right here in their 50s. But the earlier in life you and I can train ourselves how to think forward, not backwards about time, the wiser we're going to be come that great day of final examination before the Lord. Now, there's another reason to redeem the time, and it's also important. That reason is that time is the most valuable thing which you and I own. It is our most valuable earthly possession. And again, if we live long enough, someday most of us will realize this. The problem is most of us don't catch on until it's too late. The best example I could give you from history would be Queen Elizabeth I of England. Now, she was the wealthiest person in the world in her day, the Bill Gates of her era. I mean, she had everything that money could buy. And yet, when it came time for Queen Elizabeth to die, the last words which she ever spoke from her deathbed were these. She said, I would give all my kingdom for one more moment of time. You see, she understood the value of time, but she understood it too late. Let me give you one more reason to redeem the time and... And that reason is that someday we're going to have to give an account to God for how we use our time. The scripture on your outline there is Matthew 12, 36, where Jesus says, Every idle word that men shall speak, they'll give account in the day of judgment. In other words, every idle use of my time, I will someday have to stand in front of God and I'm going to have to explain to Him. Now, well, let's think about that together for just a moment. Let's see if we can get a handle on what that means. and Maybe somebody could help me out with this one. Think of it this way. What is your car doing when it is idling? Who can tell me? What's your car doing when it's idling, somebody? Okay, burning gas. I heard sitting still. In other words, it's consuming, but it's not producing. It's not doing what its maker really created it to do. Would we agree with that? It's not achieving full potential. And that's why God says someday I'm going to have to stand in front of him and I'm going to have to explain now, now, do I mean by that there's never going to be any place in life for any kind of rest or recreation or relaxation? Is that what I'm getting at here? Of course not. Uh, this is the, uh, the first uh, couple of days of about a month-long trip for us, and uh, we're eventually heading all the way out west to Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to be seeing the Grand Canyon on this trip. We're going to be seeing a lot of other things on this trip, and we normally do that together uh, as we travel as a family. That's not what I mean, but what I do mean is this. There's never going to be a place in life where I'm just mindless, idly disengaged, out of gear, if you will, as the flow of time passes us by. Rather, we live our lives thoughtfully. We live intentionally. We live purposefully with every moment God gives us. 